So what's the organization in your title? Uh, yes, well, we're with various organizations that have put together Peace Week um, to coincide with Fleet Week. We started last year when Fleet Week started, but I am a board member of Witness for Peace Southwest. Okay, and what is that? And Witness for Peace Southwest is an organization that tries to change U.S. foreign policy, especially towards Latin America, to be more one of uh, equality and respect and sovereignty and not um, belligerence and kind of occupation. So we're also informing the public about U.S. foreign policy. And so we're here at Fleet Week with, at, and Peace Week with many organizations represented. And what we're here to say is that we love these men and women. We support all Americans who are trying to do the right thing. But that we know and we believe that U.S. foreign policy leads us into so many wars that all these fine young men are actually put in a harm's way. Their families are traumatized forever by the difficulties of war and not to mention, of course, the huge casualties of the other side. Um, when we invaded Iraq, I was 23 years old the first time. That was 25 years ago. We have Al Qaeda, we have Al Qaeda and we have ISIS today because of U.S. foreign policy. Our wars are making us less safe, not more. So we want to bring our U.S. tax dollars home. We want to love and support our veterans and create peace. Doesn't Muslim imperialism have any to, anything to do with ISIS and Al Qaeda? You know, um, it's interesting you say that, but I kind of a, a spiritual principle that I work on is no matter what, sir, let's, let's look at ourselves. And if you're going to use the word imperialism, long before there was any threat from Muslim radicals, okay, let's be honest today, there's been U.S. encroachment in the Middle East. In 1953, the U.S. CIA, paid for by our, our tax dollars, overthrew in Iran Mo, President Mossadegh. He was a democratically elected president who wanted to use the wealth of his country's oil for his people. We were so afraid of what? Communism that we overthrew him. 1953. What about the what about the Barbary pirates that forced Thomas Jefferson to make it to create a U.S. Navy to to free the captured American sailors off the sh off the coast of Libya? Well, we're not we're not against uh, U.S. military. We're not against the U.S. Navy. We believe that the size of what we have right now is. Uh, in the self-interest of people making money off war and putting our soldiers and our people at harm's in harm's way. But what about the defense of democracy? Um, we believe that our country is not truly democratic, that it is a plutocracy run by the wealthy. And so it is also the wealthy that are causing these wars and creating these wars. And so I feel personally that we are not spreading democracy, we're spreading the lack of democracy, and I don't believe in that. You believe in socialism? I believe that a country and an economy should be discussed honestly and thoroughly among its people. I believe in participatory democracy, and I really think that we can't have the answers to democracy um, and what people want to be organized like if we're not discussing. And our electoral system is broken. Can you show me a socialist society that has succeeded? Um, let me tell you. I don't know how old you are. I'm uh, almost 50. And when I was a young woman in college, we were at war against Nicaragua. And we were supporting the military dictatorship in El Salvador. And we were supporting the death squads in Guatemala, et cetera, et cetera, in Central America. Well, I was kind of morally opposed to it at the time. And several years later, I went to live in those countries, sir, and I found out that my hunch was right, that we were on the wrong side. What we were doing, I totally support, for example, American farmers. I, you're old enough to know, remember 
the devastation of small American farmers in the 1980s. The corporatization of agriculture in this country has devastated rural America. I'm here to support also rural America, but I'm also to tell, here to tell people who don't seem to know or care that overseas we're doing the same thing to those people. And so that's what I support is a, is a frank and honest discussion. But since so, you're, so your question, so I'm not trying to evade your question, I'm trying to put in a little bit of context. Well, no, so, I, 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 heard, I heard your answer, but, but it sounds like that you're against the system, you're anti-establishment turn, you're anti-capitalist, would you say? Um, I sure, let me tell you, my dad, bless his soul, he passed away about two months ago, was a, thank you, was a lifelong card-carrying entrepreneur. <laughs> he was such an entrepreneur, he could barely hire one other person. He was a do-it-yourself man, the family worked for him. I've done, everyone who knows me know I've done whatever the hell I want, whenever I want, I'm a free person. So freedom is massively important to me. You're against but a strong military. What I'm here to say is the way that the United States is using our military is taking away the freedom of other people around the country. My formative, not around the country, uh, around. excuse me, around the world, thank you kind of around the country too because what it's doing is it's lo locking up our national wealth. About 50% of our tax dollars are going to pay for past wars, current wars, and future wars. So yeah, in a way, I mean, you put it well, our freedom here at home is being locked up. So are you tr here trying to get the, the soldier, I guess the sailors really, and the Marines who are around have Marines here? And we're uh, saying keep, keep safe, be safe. And you're trying to get them to disobey orders? I don't, what are their orders today? Whatever their orders are. Um, well, in Nuremberg, right, wasn't, weren't, didn't we finally understand that in Nuremberg, what you had to do was obey the, the law and the Constitution of the United States says that Congress needs no, to... Nuremberg was to prosecute, prosecute war criminals. Right. But, it, but the final... The, the, these are just sailors and, yeah. and, and Marines. And exactly. Okay. Who are put into situations that with their own consciousness, they might not, conscience, they might not be put into. But the point is, is that... The They've already taken the vow to follow orders. You're asking, right. you're asking them to, to commit treason, essentially. What, what, am I, what do you think I'm asking them to do? I think you're asking them to, asking them to disobey orders. And, What's and, their and order? Whatever they're told to do. Um, you're, you're trying to subvert the U.S. military. What I'm trying to do is uplift the Constitution and freedom of speech and freedom of conscience because... Yeah, but policy, policy can, should be handled on a policy level. That's what politics is. Yeah. But aren't we a democratic society? Aren't individuals yeah, sovereign? Yeah, yeah. Aren't we a republic where the individual is the sovereign? No, no we're not sovereigns. We're citizens of the republic. Exa okay. And so we have a right and a duty to inform. Democracy is informed consent. And I'm here to tell you, and hun, we have to go because we're doing great things tonight, is that democracy is informed consent. The American public is not informed. And what's, what's the event you're promoting? Let's so, uh, we're putting in all, today we're walking around and we're informing people that um, with the budget we have that's constant continuation of war, we don't have enough money to take care of our veterans right now. And so we're, we're pro-veteran in that we want to take care of the veterans now and we don't want to make more. No, but you're having an event that you're inviting the sol sa sailors and marines to. No. Oh, you're not? No. No. Oh, it's not for them? No. You're turning them away? 